Uh, I am extraordinarily pleased to uh, be able to be here with you. This is one of my uh, my personal. Uh, uh, <laughs> one of my personal personal uh, hopes and wishes, actually, is that I think that computers can radically revolutionize the educational process around the world. And uh, the average age at Apple, as you know, is about 29 or 30. And uh, we haven't been out of college so long ourselves. At least most of the people at Apple haven't. And uh, it's very, very important to us. And I think that, you know, as you all know better than I, Europe is sort of a doesn't exist. It was just a word invented for the convenience of Americans and, and others. And uh, the fact that you're all here in this room uh, as a step towards cooperating with each other uh, in new ways uh, pleases me very much. It's uh, difficult enough to, uh, to get cooperation amongst the competitive universities in America. And uh, I think that that's great. Um, what are we trying to do here? What are we trying to do? The, you can have many views of what a computer is. My particular view is that a computer is a new medium. A new medium, one of the media, print, television, radio. And uh, a computer will, in the future, be looked at, I think, more in this way, as a delivery vehicle for software, just like a book is a delivery vehicle for its own kind of software. And uh, whenever we develop a new medium, we generally tend to fall back into our old habits from our old media. Uh, as an example, when the television first came of age in America, the first television shows were simply a camera pointed at a radio show. Uh, and it took about 20, 30 years for television to really come into its own in the late 1950s. Uh, we have this new medium of interactive video because of the laser disc, and what is the first thing we do with it? Uh, we put movies on it. So again, we tend to fall back into our old habits. Um, in the same way, when the personal computer was invented, we tended to look at it as a smaller version of a big computer. So we put COBOL and FORTRAN and these bizarre things on it um, and looked at it in terms of simple economics rather than the revolutionary nature that it, it really was. Do you know who Alexander the Great's tutor was for about 14 years? You, you know, Aristotle. And I read this. I became immensely jealous. Uh, and. I think I would have enjoyed that a great deal. <laughs> and and uh, through the miracle of the printed page, I can at least read what uh, Aristotle wrote without an intermediary. And uh, maybe if there's a professor, they can, they can add to that. But at least I can go directly to the source material. And that is, of course, the foundation upon which our Western civilization is built. But I can't ask Aristotle a question. I mean, I can, but I won't get an answer. And so, <laughs> I, my hope is that in, in, in our lifetimes, we can make a tool of a new kind, of an interactive kind. And when I look at the personal computer, uh, we're, as you know, living in the wake of the last revolution, which, which was a new source of free energy and that was the free energy of petrochemicals, right? And it completely transformed society, and we're products of this petrochemical revolution, which is, we're still living in the wake of today. We are now entering another revolution of free energy. Uh, Macintosh, as you know, uses less power than a few of those light bulbs, and uh, yet can save us a few hours a day or give us a whole new experience. And it's free intellectual energy. It's crude, very crude. But it's getting more refined year after year after year. And in our lifetimes, it should get very refined. And so my hope is someday, when the next Aristotle is alive, we can capture the underlying world view of that Aristotle in a computer. And someday, some student will be able to not only read the words Aristotle wrote, but ask Aristotle a question and get an answer. And uh, 
that's, that's what I hope that we can do. So this is a beginning. Um, I think that, as you know right now, the computer industry is in the, in the tank. Uh, personal computers, big computers, everything. And uh, it's difficult, it's a difficult time, but I'm sure that Henry Ford had a few bad quarters back in the 1920s. <laughs> and the automobile had a sort of historical imperative. It had, it, it, the minute it was invented, it, it, a sequence of events had to happen. The same is true with the personal computer. Uh, there is a, a, a tremendous momentum behind this. And I think that this year may be a delay. This year we may look back and say, well, 1985 was a slow year. But it, there is such momentum behind this that it will happen. It will permeate and change forever our educational processes. And my hope, again, is that not too many generations of students will pass through before this happens. Uh, it will happen within 20 years. It probably will happen within 10 years. But it could happen within five years. I am 